throughout my time tutoring students, I've had a lot of students tell me that they're burnt out. And through that approach, I have tried to help them in several different ways. And I'm gonna kind of outline those different ways. I like to spend most of my time on this channel and making these videos teaching because it's what I feel like I'm actually better at is walking you through sciences and walking you through passages. But honestly, the majority of the job whenever you are an MCAT tutor is not like teaching a student sciences because you can kind of go look those up on your own. The majority of the job is it's kind of like being a best man. You just you just kind of don't let them jump off of the ledge. And so coaching and monitoring your students' mental health is a really important part of tutoring. And I realize that that's something that I've kind of overlooked on this channel and I apologize to you for that. But today I want to talk to you about burnout because it's something that's been on my mind a lot lately. I'm on a difficult rotation. I'm having to wake up at four every day to get a little bit of studying done so that when I get off at six, I can finish up my studying in time. And I'm getting pretty tired and I know that that's what you all are experiencing too. And I'm getting tired looking towards residency, which will be another six or so years for me. And I know that you are looking at medical school and residency, so that's another decade. And so you're probably tired and you're probably a little bit discouraged too. So I wanted to first tell you that that's normal and that that's okay. And I wanted to second tell you what I have tried to do with students in the past and what's worked and what hasn't worked. So first, let's kind of talk about what burnout is because I think it's thrown around a lot. And there's a difference between stressed out and burnt out. If you go to Google, and type in what is burnout it says it's a state of complete mental physical and emotional exhaustion and I think that that complete portion is what separates it from stress and or just kind of being tired of studying for the MCAT for those of you that don't know me my name is John I am about to be a fourth year medical student and I'm a professional MCAT tutor I worked for some of the big national companies and now I run this channel and this company with my sister Maggie who's the other tutor on here and we do our best to give you all all the advice that we possibly can right here on this channel and we also offer some books and some courses alongside on our website um, and you can find the links to those in the description but that's not what this video is about so in looking at burnout as this state of mental exhaustion I and mean, it can kind of have some physical manifestations I think of the two classic approaches that I have taken with students and I've either a coached them to just kind of push through it or B coached them to take a break and I wish I could say that one approach worked better than the other I honestly think that the students that pushed through it scored higher. To be completely honest, a lot, of, a couple of the students that I have encouraged to take a break never returned back to their studies or they did so years later. I'm not saying that that would be you, but I'm saying that that has happened to my students. So instead of kind of coaching you one way or the other, and I am going to offer some tips for what I think you should do, I kind of want to explore a little bit of the mental process of it and give my thoughts and opinions. And I'm no expert on this, but this is my opinion from somebody that's spoken with a lot of people about this problem and may have felt it myself a couple times. So we know what burnout is. It's this complete exhaustion. The next question should be, why burnout? Why are you burnt out? I think a lot of people would answer that question as, I've worked too hard or I've worked for too long. But then why do some people get burnt out and others don't? Is it because you're a weaker person? I don't really like that option. And why do you get burnt out on some things but you don't get burnt out on others? Whenever I look back at myself and ask myself that question, to me the reason that I feel kind of burnt out or just mentally exhausted is because I had this perceived lack of progress. If you are working towards a goal and you can see yourself moving towards it, you're probably not going to get burnt out. If anything, you're going to get encouraged. And during the middle, you'll get tired because, and you may even get a little bit discouraged because you're like, man, I have, you know, I'm almost, I'm not even halfway there. But you can look back at where you started and see that you're making progress. But if you're not pro making progress, then yeah, it's a very discouraging thing. For me, the reason that I get burnt out and I'd be willing to bet that I'm not alone is because of this perceived lack of progress. So I want to tell you two things that I have been trying to do lately. I'm not perfect at either one of them, but I've been trying to do lately to minimize my burnout in medical school and I'm willing to bet it'll help you on the MCAT. Both of these are an attempt at kind of addressing this perceived lack of progress. The first way that I would like to recommend for you to avoid burnout is to reframe how you view success. 
I know that's kind of granola and I'm definitely not that guy. But it's really helpful whenever you're studying for standardized exams or working a difficult job or career. Specifically, we'll talk about exams because this is an MCAT channel. I think what you should be doing is looking at the questions that you take and miss and the ones that really hurt your feelings whenever you spend an hour and a half on a UWorld block and you make a 40%. I think that you should reframe that because it's very easy for us that are used to making 95s on everything to see a 40 and get our feelings hurt. And then the next thing you do is you go to Reddit and you type in, you know, what's the normal score on New World? And if you're below that, then you feel worse about yourself, even though everybody's lying. So it's really important for you to reframe that. You need to look at a missed question as a learning opportunity. And you need to look at a correct question as a learning opportunity. Your success is not based on how you performed on New World or a practice test. What is successful about that day is that you worked hard, you took those questions and you learned from them. There's this passage in the Bible that I was teaching some teenagers about yesterday on Wednesday night, as a matter of fact, and we came across it and it really kind of resonated with me. Solomon, who in the Bible is perceived as the wisest man to have ever lived and a very rich man is talking about how he has tried to indulge in everything that the world has offered from um, you know money to fame to wisdom to even I think he's suggesting like wine and everything pleasurable that you could imagine this is in Ecclesiastes chapter 2 if you're interested but the point of this is not to preach the point of this is to tell you Solomon after trying all of these different things that we would think would make me happy or you happy he says so I decided that there is nothing better than to enjoy food and drink and to find satisfaction in work. And I think that that's one thing we need to do. We need to reframe the way that we look at studying in the way that we measure success. A successful day studying does not mean that you scored 80% on your U world that day. A successful day studying means that you studied and that you learned something. That's the whole point of this. If you're learning things, if you're missing questions and you're taking things from that, then that is success. You're moving closer to your goal. So try to retrain your mind that whenever you miss a question studying for the MCAT, it's a good thing. You have identified a content gap. Seriously, make this effort. It's a good thing when you identify that you don't know something. The second thing that I'm trying to implement, and I'm really bad at this one, but I'm trying hard to implement this to help to kind of combat burnout is to incorporate some quiet time in my day. I feel like we spend our whole lives either working towards a goal or entertaining ourselves you know I like can't wait to get home and watch how I met your mother or play play on my phone or something like that and then at the end of the day I'm like why am I exhausted you know I had two hours just sitting on the couch playing on my phone or something like that and so something I'm trying to implement lately is just 10 to 15 minutes of quiet time for me that's prayer it doesn't have to be for you but I just like to kind of walk outside and pace around and, and think and have some quiet time apart from listening to some stupid sports YouTube video or something like that I don't think that you need three months of not studying to reset. I think that you probably just need to take the time to reflect back every day and think, you know, why am I doing this? And am I doing this intentionally, purposefully, and kind of give yourself some props for making progress. If you're going to go to the dentist, is it better for you to brush your teeth for, you know, an entire day right before you go to the dentist? Or is it better for you to brush your teeth a little bit every single day? It's better to do it a little bit every single day. So don't think that your mental health can improve just from you taking a break for a month and, and playing video games for a month or hanging out with friends for a month. I mean, that's that's not going to fix the fact that this is a hard test and what you're trying to do is really, really difficult. Take the time every single day. So just a review, in my opinion, burnout for me comes from a lack of progress. If you're like that, then I think two things that you could do to really improve your burnout, your feeling of I'm not going to make it there and I don't even know if I care to make it there is number one, reframing your view of success and number two taking some quiet time that can be anything from taking a walk for me it is praying just kind of pacing around outside I really enjoy doing it believe it or not I actually pray for all of the students as much as I can remember to I hope me mentioning some of this doesn't offend you and if it does I'm sorry but also if you would like for me to pray for you and and your MCAT journey feel free to comment below I appreciate you watching this video and kind of indulging me as I walk along some thoughts these are usually conversations I have with students 101 but unfortunately I don't have the time to do that anymore if there's any way that we can help y'all please leave a comment below we appreciate everything that you've done for us you've made this business and this portion of my residency application something that I never thought it would be I'm really appreciative of that. Thanks for watching the video. 
I'll see you in the next one.